Hello, my name is Kirill Aramenko and welcome to the Learn Machine Learning in One Hour series. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the simple linear regression, a basic machine learning model which is designed to predict the unknown value of one variable based on the known value of another variable. And while simple, it's still very powerful to use in business applications. Uh, in these tutorials, I'll be running you through the intuition and Adlan de Ponteves is going to be running you through the practical implementations in Python. So without further ado, let's dive straight into it and learn everything about simple linear regression. A simple linear regression is basically this formula where uh, y equals b0 plus b1 times x. And you might recognize this formula from uh, back in high school. It's just a formula of a, a trend line or a, a slope, sloped a line on a uh, xy axis and let's go through these um, variables and um, coefficients one by one so this is the dependent variable the de dependent variable is something you're trying to explain for instance how does a person's salary change with the years of experience that he has so in that case y would be the dependent variable uh, or how what grade does a student get depending on how much time he's put into studying in that case y would be the dependent variable so something that you're trying to understand how it depends on something else uh, x is your independent variable in this case in the simple linear regression we only have one independent variable so we don't even have to call it x1 we could just call it x and uh, this is the variable that is you're assuming that it is causing the dependent variable to change or as we will learn further, uh, sometimes that independent variable might not be a direct causal factor, but it's still there might be an implied association between the two. And in that case, um, you're trying to figure out this association. Then B1 is the coefficient uh, for the independent variable, and it kind of says um, how the effect or how a change in X1, a unit change in X1, and we'll be talking about this a lot, unit changes, a unit change in X1, how that affects a unit change in Y. So it's kind of, think of it as uh, the translator or the multiplier or something like that, that that's connects it to the connector between Y and X1. So you can't just say, um, you can't always say X1 is directly proportional. There is... Um, well, you can't, you can't just say X, Y, the change in X is always equal to the change in Y. There might be a, this coefficient of proportion to which proportion that um, change is inflated or deflated. And B0 is a constant. So it's a constant term. Um, and we'll talk about the constant just in a, a few seconds. So now let's look at the simple linear regression because it's the easiest one to discuss. It's a very uh, pretty straightforward. You can visualize it quite well. So here we've got the Y and X axis. Uh, let's look at that specific example where we have experience and salary. So experience is going to be our horizontal axis, salary is our vertical axis. And we want to understand how uh, people's salary depends on their experience. Well, what we do in regression is we don't just come up with a theory, we look at the evidence, we look at the live hard facts. So here are some observations we've had. So in a certain company, this is how uh, salaries are distributed among people who have different levels of experience. And what a regression does is, so that's the formula for regression. In our case, it will change to salary equals B0 plus B1 times experience. And what that essentially means is just putting a line through your chart that best fits this data. And we'll talk about best fitting in the next tutorial when we're talking about ordinary least squares. But for now, this is the chart, this is the line that best fits this data and even looks like it, right? So I don't, it's much hard, it's quite hard to draw a line that fits this data better. And the assumption here is it's impossible. This is the best line. For now, let's focus on the coefficients and uh, the coefficient and the constant. So what does the constant mean here? Well, the constant actually means the, the point where the line crosses the vertical axis. And let's say it's $30,000. What does that mean? Well, it means that when B1, when experience is zero, so when, as you see on the horizontal axis, when experience is at zero, then in the formula on the right, you can see that the second part, B1 times experience becomes zero. So salary equals B0. That means that salary will equal to $30,000 when a person has no experience. So as soon as somebody is you know, fresh from university and joins this company, most likely they will have a salary about $30,000. You know, there will be some uh, confidence intervals there, but we won't go into that right now. Just we can say that according to this model, that person uh, will be probably getting paid $30,000. 
Now, what is B1? B1 is the slope of the line. And um, so the steeper the line, the more you get, um, more money you get per extra year of experience. Let's look at this in uh, this particular example. Let's say somebody went from, um, I don't know, maybe four to five years experience, right? So then to understand how his salary will increase, you have to project this onto the line and then project that onto the salary axis. And you can see that here um, for one year experience, the person will get an extra $10,000 on top of his salary. So if uh, the coefficient B1 is less, then the slope will be less. And that means the salary increase will be less per every year of experience. If the slope is greater, then that means the... Uh, experience will yield a more increase in salary. And that's pretty much it. That's how a simple linear regression works. So the core goal here is that we're not just drawing a line uh, theoretically that you know, we, we came up with somehow. We're actually using um, observations that we have to find the best fitting line and what a best fitting line is. Today we'll find out how to find that best fitting line or in fact, how the simple linear regression finds that line for you. So Here's our simple linear regression, the same chart, salary versus experience. We've got these uh, red dots, which represent the actual observations that we have in our data. And we've got the trend line, which represents the best fitting line or um, the simple linear regression model. So now let's draw some vertical lines from the actual observations to the model. And let's look at one of these specific examples to understand what we're talking about here. So here you can see that the red cross is where that person is sitting at in terms of salary. So let's say this person with 10 years of experience is earning $100,000. Well, the model line, so the black line at the bottom, it actually tells us where that person should be sitting according to the model in terms of salary. And according to the model, it should be a bit lower. It should be um, somewhere where that green cross is, which is about maybe, let's say, $80,000. So now the red cross is called YI, so Y of the subscript I, and that is the actual observation. The green cross is called YI hat, and that is the modeled observation or the modeled value so basically with those that level of experience where would he be where does the model predict that he would be earning and so the green line therefore is the difference between what he's actually earning and what he should be earning so uh, or not should be what he's modeled to be earning so therefore the, the green line it will be the same regardless of what uh, dependent variable you have whether it's salary whether it's grade at school whatever so it's the difference between the observed and the modeled for that level of independent variable. Now, to get this best fitting line, what is done is you take the sum, you take uh, each one of those green lines or those distances, you square them, and then you take the sum of those squares. Once you have the sum of the squares, for you got to find the minimum. So basically, what a simple linear regression does is it draws lots and lots and lots of these lines these uh, trend lines. Well, this is like a simplistic way of imagining it. The linear regression draws all these, um, all possible li trend lines through your data and counts the uh, sum of those squares every single time and it uh, rec records it somewhere in a temporary you know, for file or something like that. And then it finds the minimum one. So it looks for the minimum sum of squares. It finds a line which has the smallest sum of squares possible. And that line will be the best fitting line. And that is called the ordinary least squares method. So that's how the simple linear regression works. Hello and welcome to this Python tutorial. I'm super excited because we are going to implement the very first model of machine learning. We're going to start with the most simple one. It's the simple linear regression model. So let's do it right now and let's do it on Python. So the first step of making a model is to pre-process the data. So let's just copy all this. That's the data preprocessing template. Let's copy this and let's put it in our simple linear regression Python file and let's paste it here. And now we need to change a few things. Well, first we need to change the name of our data set. Here it's not data.csv, but salarydata.csv. So let's change it right now. Salarydata.csv. And now let's see what we need to change. 
Okay, so first let's import the libraries to get the essential tools we will need to build our model. And here, as you can see in the IPython console, the libraries are well imported. And now let's select this line and execute to have a look at our data set. So as you can see here, the data set is well imported. And now to have a look at it, we need to go to Variable Explorer and then appears here the data set. So let's double click on it and let's explain the problem. So first of all, let's perhaps change the format because we have the scientific notation. Maybe we would prefer something like uh, with no decimal and regular floats with no decimal. So to do this, we need to change this three here, which is the number of decimals by zero, and this G by F. And then you'll see that if I click OK, I'll get my salaries in this format, which is, I think, better. So, OK, so this data set contains two columns, the year's experience and the salary. So basically, these are informations of employees in a company. The first column, year's experience, gives the number of years of experience each employee has in the company and its respective salary in the salary column. And so we have 30 observations, that is 30 employees for which we have those informations, because as you can see, the index started at zero here. And so what we'll do here is that we will train a simple linear regression model that will learn the correlations between the number of years of experience each employee has in the company and its salary. And by understanding those correlations between the number of years of experience and the salary, then the model will be able to give some predictions for each of the numbers of years of experience here. And you're going to see how the predictions will be close to the true results, which are the true salary. That means that we will compare the true salaries with the predicted salaries. Okay, and now let's see what we need to change here for X and Y. So as a reminder, X is the matrix of features. That is the matrix of independent variable. Here, the independent variable is this variable here, the years experience, the number of years of experience. And then the dependent variable is the salary. So our matrix of features here, which is, you know, taking the data set and removing the last column of the data set, that is the salary column with this minus one here, will contain only one column, which will be the number of years of experience. But then we need to change the index here for Y because Remember in our data example in the data preprocessing part, the dependent variable was on the fourth column. So since indexes in Python start at zero, then it had index three. But here you can see that the dependent variable is the second column. And so since indexes in Python start at zero, that means that this column here has index one. So here, since we need to put the index of the dependent variable column, then that means we need to put one. And then we're all good. We're ready to create our matrix of features, which is here a matrix of only one column and our dependent variable vector. So let's do this, you'll see. I'll select this line and press Command and Control plus Enter to execute. Here it is, the matrix of features X is created. Let's have a look, X. So as I just told you, this matrix contains only one column. You can see here actually that it contains 30 lines and one column. So that's our matrix of independent variable. And now let's create our dependent variable vector. And now that we corrected the index here, it should be all fine. So let's select this and press Command or Control plus Enter to execute. Here it is. Let's have a look at Y. And here is Y. We can change the format again and replace this three by zero to have the salaries in this format. That's better. And that's all our salaries. And this column is the dependent variable vector. And as you can see, we can clearly make the difference here between the matrix of features and the vector here, because as you can see, there is this one here that tells that this is a matrix that has one column. And here we don't have anything after the comma that means that it's a vector. So you have to make the distinction between the fact that this X here is a matrix because it's the matrix of features, the matrix of independent variable, and Y here is a vector since it's the vector of the dependent variable. So let's click OK, and now we're all good. So now we're ready to move on to the next sub-step of the data preprocessing first step of our model. And this is to split the data set into the training set and the test set. So let's see, we have 30 observations. So a good split would be to have, for example, 20 observations in the training set and 10 observations in a test set. Let's pick that split, even if we recommend in general more like an 80-20% split. But here we're making a simple model, so we can select 20 observations to go to the training set 
and 10 to go to the test set. So that means that for the test size here, we need to input 1 third. So that way, 1 third of 30 equals 10 observations will go to the test set. And that's it. That's all we need to change. Now we're ready to make the split of the data set into the training set and the test set. And remember, this random state parameter here, set to zero, is here so that we all get the same results because there are some random factors in the algorithm. So it's better for the learning experience if we all have the same results. So let's select this. It's already now. Let's select this section and press Command and Control plus Enter to execute. And as you can see now, our training set composed of X train and Y train is created, and our test set composed of X test and Y test is created as well. So let's have a look at them. X train, Y train, X test and Y test. Okay, so these two sets above are composing the training set because it contains X train, the matrix of independent variable, and Y train, the dependent variable vector for the training set. And below is the test set composed of X test, the matrix of independent variable for the test set, and Y test, the dependent variable vector. And so what happens is that we are going to train our model on the training set here. That means that our model will learn the correlations between X train here and Y train so that it can later predict the results of the dependent variable, the salaries, based on these informations here. And then once our model is trained on the training set by having learned all the correlations between these two variables, we will test its performance, its power of prediction on the test set here. So that means that for each of the test set observations here, we will predict the corresponding salary, and then we will compare the predicted salary to the real salary, which are the salaries here. So you're going to see that in the next step, but that's the idea behind making a model, making any machine learning model. We are training the model on the training set, that means that our model learns on the training set, and then we're testing its performance on the test set. Okay, so let's click OK to close the windows here. And now let's move on to the next step. That's what we did in the first step. Now the data is all well pre-processed. We have our training set here with X train and Y train and our test set composed of X test and Y test. And we didn't have to apply feature scaling. As you can see on X train here, we have the numbers of years of experience as they were originally. And that's because the library that we're going to choose to build our simple linear regression model will take care of that for us. And speaking of library, that's what we're going to do in this tutorial because we are going to fit the simple linear regression model to the training set. And to do this, we're going to use this specific library that will do the job for us. And you will see how easy it is to fit the simple linear regression model to the training set. So let's do this right now. The first thing that we need to do is obviously to import this specific library. And so we're going to import it from scikit-learn, which contains a great deal of libraries and tools to make machine learning models. And so the library that we're going to use for a simple linear regression is the linear model library from scikit-learn. And then in this library, we are going to import a class, which is the linear regression class. And then what will happen is the following thing. We are going to create an object of the linear regression class, and this object will actually be the regressor the simple linear regressor. And so we're going to call this object regressor simply because it's going to be the regressor that we will fit to the training set. And actually, in order to fit it to the training set, we will use something called a method because the linear regression class contains several methods and one of them is the fit method. And this method is like a tool, a function that will fit your regressor object that we will create to the training set. So let's write the code and everything will be all clear. So the first thing that we need to do is to import the linear regression class. So let's do this. So since we are importing this class from scikit-learn linear model library, we will first write from sklearn that linear underscore model, which is the name of the library. And so from this library, we are going to import the linear regression class. And the linear regression class is spelled this way with capital L in linear and capital R in regression. No space. Here it is. That's your class, the linear regression class. And so now we are going to create an object 
of this linear regression class that we will call regressor. So here I'm writing regressor, and that's where I'm creating my object of the linear regression class. And to create an object of the class, here we need to call the linear regression class. And to call it, we simply write its name, linear regression, and then we write parenthesis because by doing this, this is like a function that will return an object of itself, which is actually the regressor. And actually, if we click here at the end of linear regression, and if we press command plus I, that will inspect this class, and we will be able to get some info about this class. So let's do this. Let's press command plus I. And here, as you can see in the object inspector, I have some information about the linear regression class. So the main information that we're mostly interested in are the parameters. But here that's just to show you that we can get some information about the class and that there are some parameters to input. But these are not compulsory parameters to input and therefore we will not input any parameters here. We are satisfied with this. With this we can create a simple linear regression model. We don't need to input the parameters. So that's it. With this simple line the regressor object is made and now what we need to do is to fit it to the training set. And so as I told you, a class contains some methods, and one of these methods is the fit method, and that's the method we will use to fit the regressor object to our training set. And so to use this method, we need to first take the object, regressor, then by adding a dot here, we can, as you can see, call the different methods of the linear regression class. These are all the methods, and so the method we want to choose is the fit method because it's the method that will fit our regressor object to the training set. So let's press enter here and now we're taking the fit method. And so now we need to add some parentheses because we need to specify which data set we want to fit the regressor to and of course it's a training set and remember the training set in Python is composed of X train and Y train. So here we will need to specify both and actually we can do the same here for fit we can inspect it by pressing command plus I, and as you can see, this gives the information about the fit method, and especially the parameters to input. And here you can see that the first parameter is X, which is the training data. And by training data here, they mean that it's the matrix of features of the training set. And the matrix of features of the training set is the matrix of the independent variable, that is X train, because if we go to variable explorer here, you can see that X train contains the independent variable, and only the independent variable, and that's where we want to input for this x here. So that means that the first argument is x train, and then what is the second argument? It says that the second argument is y, and that y is the target values. So the target values is just another name for dependent variable, because these are the target values that we want to predict, and of course this has to be associated to x train here, because we are fitting our regressor to the training set. So y here is going to be the dependent variable vector of the training set, that is y train. So here for the second parameter, we need to input y underscore train. And that's it. This line of code fits your regressor object, which is an object of the linear regression class, to the training set composed of x train and y train. And so now this code section is ready, so we are ready to select this and execute, and this will not only create our simple linear regressor, but also it will fit this regressor to our training data. That means that by executing this code section here, our model will already learn the correlations of our training set to learn how it can predict the dependent variable, which is the salary, based on the information of the independent variable that is the number of years of experience. So now let's press Command or Control plus Enter to execute this code section here. And here we go. Our simple linear regressor is created and fitted to the training set. So if you want to compare it to machine learning, well, here the machine is the simple linear regression model. And learning is the fact that this simple linear regression machine learned on the training set here, composed of X train and Y train. So that's what machine learning is. We created a machine, which is the regressor here, the simple linear regressor, and we made this machine learn on the training set 
to understand the correlations between the experience and the salary so that this machine based on its learning experience can then predict the salary with respect to the experience. So that's what machine learning is about. This is the most simple machine learning model and we just created it. And now that the simple linear regression that is the machine itself learned these correlations, we can see how it will predict some new observations which will be the test set observations. And that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to see how our simple linear regression machine learned the correlations in a training set to see how it can predict the test set observations, which are new observations because indeed our simple linear regression model didn't learn anything from the test set. So let's see how it can predict new observations. And to do this, we will create a vector of predicted values. That is, we will create a vector that will contain the predictions of the test set salaries and we will put all these predicted salaries into a single vector that we will call y pred. So y pred, and this is going to be the same for all machine learning models that we will create, y pred is going to be the vector of predictions of the dependent variable. And in this particular example for simple linear regression, since the dependent variable is the salary, then that means that this vector will contain the predicted salaries for all the observations of our test set. So now let's create this vector of predictions. So here we'll add equal. And now we will take our regressor that we created and trained on the training set. And again, we're going to use a method of the linear regression class. But this time it's not going to be the fit method. It's going to be the predict method. And the predict method, as you can guess, is a method that will make the predictions of the salaries of some observations. And therefore, we will need to specify which observations we want to make the predictions. And so we will need to specify that we want to make the predictions of the test set. And so in this predict function, we will input the test set. But you will see. So as always, when we want to use a method, we add a little dot here. And then we can choose the method here, as you can see. So before we use the fit method, and this time we're using the predict method. So I just pressed enter. And now we can input some parameter. So if we press command I to inspect the predict method, we get this. And you can see that in the parameters, it says that we need to input only one parameter and that this parameter is X. And X is of course our matrix of features of new observations. And therefore it's going to be X test. And let's select this line because now it's ready. Our vector of predictions is ready to be built. Execute. And now we can see our Y pred vector that actually appeared in the variables in variable explorer. So let's have a look. Here is Y pred. And let's also open Y test to compare. All right. So now what's very important to understand is the distinction between Y test and Y pred. So it's very simple. Y test is the real salaries of your 10 observations in a test set. That's the salaries those 10 employees here really have in the company. And then those salaries here in the Y pred vector are the predicted salaries. So that's the salaries of these 10 employees predicted by our simple linear regression model. So in short, Y test contains the real salaries and Y pred contains the predicted salaries. So now what's interesting to do is to compare the real salaries to the predicted salaries. So for example, let's take the first observation. So this real salary here and this predicted salary here correspond to the same employee. And we can see that this particular employee indexed by zero has a $37,000 salary and that's his real salary. And our model predicted that this employee has a $40,000 salary. So the predicted salary is not too far from the real salary and that actually makes a good prediction. We can have less good prediction. For example, if we look at the seventh employee here, well, its real salary is $55,000 and our model predicted that this employee has a $64,000 salary. So it overestimated the salary. And you'll understand why it did that after when we look at the graphic results. You'll perfectly understand why because you'll see that the simple linear regression is actually a straight line that is trying to be the closest as possible to the real observation points. 
So you will see why it sometimes make some predictions that are far from the reality. But then it can also make some great predictions and that's the case for the last one because the last employee of the test set has a $101,000 salary and our model predicted that this same employee has $100,000, well almost $101,000 salary. So that's a very accurate prediction. Okay, so let's click OK now. That's the idea about the vector of predictions that we create here. All this will get a lot more clear because we will visualize the result. We will visualize what's happening between, you know, the, the truth and the predictions. We will build a plot where we'll have our true observation points. That means our employee with their real salaries. And then we will plot a straight fitting line that is going to be the simple linear regression line. And on this line will actually be the predictions of our model for each of the employee. And now we are finally getting to the fun part, which is to visualize the training set and the test set results. So that means that we're going to plot our observation points as well as the simple linear regression line to see how there is this linear dependency and to see how the predictions of the simple linear model can be close to the real observations. So let's do this. Let's plot these graphs and let's interpret the results. Okay, so generally to plot a graph in Python, we're going to use this matplotlib pyplot library that we imported as an essential library in the preprocessing step. So it's already imported. That's great. We're ready to start plotting our graphs. So the first thing that we're going to do is to plot the real observation points, that is the employees of the company characterized by their number of years experience and their salary. That means that on the x-axis we will have the number of years of experience and on the y-axis we'll have the salary. So let's do this. It's actually quite simple. We need to use plt.scatter, which is a function of pyplot that will make a scatter plot of the observation points of your data set. So you'll see it's actually quite simple. We just need to type plt.scatter. Then in parentheses we first need to input the x coordinate of your observation point. So that's x train, because first we're starting with the training set, x train. So that's actually the x coordinate of our observation points, because x train contains the number of years of experience, as you can see. These are the number of years of experience in x train. And now what will be the y coordinate? Well, the y coordinate will be the real salaries that the employees have in the company. And of course, this is the salaries contained in the y train vector. If we look at y train here, these are the real salaries of our observation points, that is of our employees in the company. So, okay, that will be y train. And then since we'll plot the observation points and also the regression line, it would be better to colorize in different colors those two entities, like the observation points in one color and the regression line in another color. So that's as you prefer. Generally, what I like to choose is to colorize the observation points in red and the regression line in blue. So here I'll just choose color equals red. All right, and that will plot all the observation points, the real values. And now what we're going to do is to plot the regression line, that is the predictions. So here we're not going to choose plt.scatter because we're not making a scatter plot of the points. We will use simply plt.plot. And then as usual in plt.plot, we will first enter the x coordinate of the points in the regression line and the y coordinate. So the x coordinate will be x train as well, because, you know, to plot a line, we just need some x coordinates of the line. And then we'll specify what the y coordinates are. And speaking of y coordinates, what do you think the y coordinates of this regression line will be? Well, it will be the predictions of the x train numbers of years of experience and the predictions of these numbers of years of experience in the training set in x train are the predicted salaries of the x train observations. So then be careful it's not y pred because y pred are the predicted salaries of the test set observations. Here we have test set. But what we only need to do is to just take this and copy this and then paste it here. And here we'll just need to replace x test by x train because we want the predictions of the training set and not the test set. Because here, you know, we want to compare the real salaries to the predicted salaries, but based on the same observations, that is the observations of the training set. Okay, so then we have our x coordinate and our y coordinate of the regression line. 
And now what do we need? A color. Yes, because we want to make the distinction between the observation points above and our regression line. So since we chose red for the observation points, here we'll choose blue. Or you can choose whatever you want. That's just my personal preference, but you're welcome to try something different. And here it is. This second line plots the simple linear regression fitting line to our training set. Okay, now we'll just improve our plot by giving a title, a label at the x-axis, a label to the y-axis, and it will be ready. So let's do this. Let's add a title. It's plt.title. Let's give salary vs experience because we want to see the relationship between the salary and the experience. And here let's just add training set in parentheses to specify that we're plotting the training set results because then we'll do the same for the test set results. So just to make the distinction. And that's it for the title. Great. Now let's add a label to the x-axis. So to do this, we just need to add the command plt.xlabel. And then let's call our x-axis years of experience because on the x-axis are the numbers of years of experience. So years of experience. Here it is. Great. And now same for the y-axis. So this time it's going to be plt.ylabel and then parenthesis salary. All right. Great. And then we just need to add a final line. It's plt that show with parenthesis. And that's to specify that it's the end of the graph and that we are ready to plot it. Okay, so now it should be good. We have our observation points thanks to plt.scatter. We have our regression line thanks to plt.plot. We have a title, labels to our axis. So it should be all fine. Let's try. Let's try to select this and execute. Press command and control plus enter to execute. And here is our graph. Great. Let's enlarge this. All right. So, okay, the first really important distinction to understand is that we need to make the distinction between the real values and the predicted values. So the real values are our red observation points, all these red points here. This contain the real values of our employees. That is, okay, their years of experience, but then their real salary, the salary they really have in the company. And then the predicted values are on this blue simple linear regression line. And by predicted values, I mean the predicted salaries, which are the projections of the points of this line to the y-axis. So for example, if we take this observation point here that corresponds to an employee that has four years of experience and a salary about 55,000, so that's its real salary. But then to get the predicted salary of this employee, we need to first project this point on the regression line and then project again to the y-axis to get the predicted salary, which is then 60,000. So for this observation point, the real value for its salary is 55,000 and the predicted value for its salary is 60,000. So that's the first really important distinction to make. Now, what's interesting to see is that there is clearly a linear dependency between the salary and the years of experience, because as we can see, our regression line is approaching quite well all our observation points. You know, if we had some points everywhere, then our regression model could fit a straight line, but it would be far from our observation points. But here, since it's approaching quite well the points, then that means that there is linear dependency, and that's why we could fit a good simple linear regression model that gives good predictions. And speaking of predictions, we have some accurate predictions. For example, this one, we can see that the real salary is close to the predicted salary. This one too. This one is a very accurate prediction. The prediction is almost perfect. And this one as well. And then, of course, we have some less accurate predictions because this is not a 100% linear dependency. So, of course, for example, this real salary here is further from the predicted salary, which is here. So here, as you can see, that's the predicted salary for this particular employee, and that's the real salary. And same for this employee, and this one as well, this one as well. And now the third thing that is actually important and that we have to keep in mind each time we make a model is that these are the observations of the training set. So these are the results of our simple linear regression model 
but which was trained on all these red points here, on all these red observation points here. So let's see how this simple linear regression blue line can approach new observations. And these new observations will actually be the test set observations. These are new observations because our model didn't learn on these test set observations. So what we will do next is we will plot the same kind of graph. We will keep this blue regression line because this is the regression line that was trained on the training set, so we don't want to change that. However, we will plot some new red points here because here these are the training set observation points and we will plot in the second graph the test set observation points. So let's do this and let's see how our simple linear regression line can predict some new observations. So what we'll do is we'll copy this actually and paste it here because you'll see that we will only have a few things to change. Okay, so first let's change the section title here and specify that we're now visualizing the test set results. Okay, and here let's specify also in the title of the plot that we're now plotting the test set results. Great. And now what do we need to choose? Okay, so in the first line, the first line is plt.scatter that plots our observation points. And now since we are interested in looking at the observation points of the test set, here it won't be x train and y train, it will be x test and y test. Because x test and y test are the coordinates of the observation points of the test set. And then something very important to understand here. Do you think that in the second line, plt.plot, do you think we need to change x train here and here by x test? And the answer is no, because our regressor is already trained on the training set. So whether we keep here the training set or replace by test set, we will obtain the same simple linear regression line. Indeed, if we replaced here x train by x test, we would just build some new points of the same regression line corresponding to the new predictions of the test set observation points, because when we trained our simple linear regressor on the training set, we obtained one unique model equation, which is the simple linear equation itself. And therefore, whether we build the regression line here by predicting the training set points or the test set points, well, since these predictions result from the same unique simple linear equation, we will get the same regression line. So actually, this is ready now. We are ready to plot the test set results. So let's do this. I'll select this and press command and control plus enter to execute. And here are the test set results. So let's enlarge this. Okay, so these are the test set results. So be careful, this blue regression line is the blue regression line that we had in our previous plot in the training set results. So that's the same line because that's our simple linear regression model trained on the training set. But then these red points here are new points. These are the observation points of the test set whereas before it was the observation points of the training set. So it's important to understand all this. And now let's interpret and let's give the final verdict. Well, this is actually really good because these are new observations and our simple linear regression model is making some very good job at predicting those new employee salaries. Because for example, if we take this one, it's clearly on the simple linear regression line. So the predicted salary is the same as the real salary because the red point is on the line. Same for this one, very accurate prediction, and same for this one, this one, and this one as well. And of course, since there is no 100% linear dependency between the salary and the years of experience, there is of course some less accurate predictions like these two, and this one, and maybe a little bit this one. But overall, that's great. We made a good simple linear regression model that is perfectly able to predict new observations thanks to this linear dependency between the salary and their years of experience. All right, so thank you for watching these tutorials and congratulations for making your very first machine learning model. So keep in mind, the machine here is the simple linear regression model and learning means that we trained this simple linear regression machine model on the training set. That means that it learned the correlations of the training set to be able to make some future predictions. And you know, so these are the predictions of the test sets, but we could make some new predictions with some new employees having other years of experience. And that would give us some great prediction of its salary, even if it was not in the original data set observation points.